Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM World of Watson 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hello everyone, welcome back to Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE's Cube. We're here at World of Watson for live coverage of two days, wall to wall. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Sham Nagarajan, who's the Director of Worldwide Blockchain and Cognitive Business Operations. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you, John. So we love blockchain, obviously. It's very disruptive technology. You know, Bitcoin, we saw that evolution. Powered some of the best, you know, <laughs> racketeering, underbelly kind of activities, but all, all early adopters are, are about that kind of technology. But blockchain has emerged beyond Bitcoin, and, and it's really being in, looked at as a fundamental underlying disruptive technology, a disruptive enabler for yeah. finance, transactions, and really an interesting traction and mainstream now that it's getting. So give us the update. What's IBM doing with blockchain? You guys recently open sourced it, yeah. which is huge, do, huge news. What is blockchain? How do customers are dealing with it? I mean, what's the reaction? What are they? What are they? What are they saying to you? Look, you know, blockchain, as you realize, has uh, grown beyond just Bitcoin. Um, we believe it's the next era of transaction processing, and it helps customers significantly do some disruptions that they couldn't do in the past. Um, there is a lot of customers who are doing what we call as blockchain tourism. We see them tinkering with it but we are also starting to see some realism injected into um, applying blockchain to real sol solving problems. And I'll give you an example. Last week we announced that Walmart um, was actually partnering with IBM in doing and tracking pork and meat manufacturing, uh, meat from the slaughterers all the way to where it goes to the customers. So they can track the recalls or track the quality of the product as it goes through the supply chain. So as you, you found a lot of interest from the finance and the trade finance kind of uh, places, we are starting to see more innovation in the supply chain management side. And we believe that's where the next level of growth for blockchain is going to come. What's the key thing that people are getting excited about blockchain? Is it, is it the, um, the unleashing of a kind of a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network? Is there unique features that customers are attracted to? What, what's all the, the uh, buzz about? It, you know, the shared ledger is the basic basis for all the uh, distributed ledger for all the uh, blockchain. But it's more than that though. It's a distributed ledger, but it's decentralized power in the network. Traditionally, any kind of network that's been established, business network, someone is always in control. But in this situation with blockchain, no one is in control. And therefore, it increases the trust that goes across with, among the participants in the network. Um, it injects the ability for regulators or auditors to be part of that same network. So therefore, it makes it uh, a very interesting new business model. Talk about the auditing. This is a big part. Okay, so you got the ledger, which essentially, you know, who's playing in the network, if you will. But the key is no single point of control. Correct. That is a huge deal. Now, the, the question people say is, well, okay, how do you trust somebody? And it's kind of the, <laughs> there'll be a kind of a skepticism, if you will. How do you guys answer that? Well, you know, um, there, we believe four, four key things part of uh, uh, blockchain, the shared ledger itself. But there's an element of consensus that's a lot, uh, um, associated with it. Consensus is really when um, John and I do a transaction, Dave, you're part of this network, and you agree that this transaction is part of our common ledger. So there's a level of trust that is actually distributed across the network, and they um, instill that uh, that uh, transaction will go through, will continue to be honored as, as it goes through. So it makes it very interesting for- So the transparency uh, the, is everyone in the network sees everything. Absolutely, the, the transparency is there. And also remember, it's a permission network, which means um, you don't have to expose all the transactions to everyone. You could, uh, you could ch choose to what, what others can see and what they cannot see as well. So how would you describe the adoption of where you're at right now? Obviously in the early days, you know, haven't hit the steep part of the S curve, but but where are we and what are, you, what are your expectations? Look, IBM has um, put their weight behind Hyperledger. Hyperledger's got, I think the last time I checked, about 80 to 85 different um, organizations that, uh, uh, that are backing the standards. And Hyperledger is getting widely ad adopted. Um, we are starting to see customers beyond the blockchain tourism to start to apply for things like dispute resolution, compliance, and uh, provenance. Uh, the Walmart situation is actually a provenance. IBM actually, um, if you guys know or saw a, 
um, press release, we implemented it internally within IBM, within the IBM global financing for dispute resolution. IBM yes. deals with 3,500 suppliers across, uh, across the world, and we on average have locked up about $100 million in terms of uh, capital and liquidity in disputes, right? And uh, we implemented a blockchain, which has been uh, running for the last two months, and as a consequence of that, we were significantly able to reduce the time it took to do dispute resolution from 40 days all the way to less than about 10 days, and release a significant limit of uh, uh, money as a, in the process as well. So we're starting to see those kind of realis realism, real applications being injected in the in our customers. Yeah, I saw I, I saw that. I think the average transaction or dispute was like thirty-three thousand dollars a piece, and there were many, many thousands of them. So, yeah. and it's and, and, and the time to resolution was was far too long if you're a supplier. And so Agreed. that's huge. Um, you mentioned Walmart. Um, how did a, a company like Walmart? do this tracking beforehand? Was it some kind of tagging or RFID? Or well, just tagging, not do it, or? RFID, there's uh, you know, systems. So Walmart built their own supply chain uh, systems to do it. Um, last week, I actually spent some time with uh, um, what we had a, a process transformation summit in Napa, and we spent some time at uh, Walmart. What they do is they actually have a supply chain application that runs across and they give access to their suppliers. And information is whatever is input by the suppliers voluntarily into the system. This actually allows it, this blockchain kind of uh, network established, makes it immutable and final, the transactions that go into the system. Right? And that makes it more interesting for Walmart itself to be able to track where exactly the meat is manufactured and isolate that piece. So. Another example is Everledger. We were talking yes. about that off camera, basically tracking diamonds from mine to, to finger. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and that's Hyperledger, is it not? Or? It, it is. Uh, Everledger is built on um, um, Hyperledger standards, and uh, they're one of our uh, showcase pieces, and we partner with them very closely. And so what's the hacker situation? Because actually last week the DNS got a DDoS attack and that shut down almost half the internet, Netflix, Twitter, uh, a lot of the popular sites, even Spotify. Um, I know there's encryption built into blockchain, which is nice, so, so you got security built in. But you're seeing a, a lot of like the, the clearing houses. Can any one point of attack hurt that, the network, I mean, how do you guys respond to that? How do you secure, secure the customer's expectations? Well, there are two things, right? Um, the Bitcoin or the Ethereum network, which is primarily the anonymous network, right? Anonymous doesn't have uh, identity associated with it. IBM believes in a private and a permission network, so enterprises that actually establish this network know who else is, is part of this network and give access to them. So that's one. So therefore, if any um, unauthorized access does happen, they can immediately isolate and know what, what that thing is. Um, second thing is, um, from a, you know, right now the the blockchain network itself, we're not seeing assets being transferred and, and done as part of it. It's more informatory, maybe transfer of information, transfer of some some very um, very low value assets. So our assessment, we keep on the analyst team in Silicon Angle, is that it's not blockchain that was insecure; it was the exchanges. Yeah. But people read yeah. the press, right? They right. see the press, they go, they associate Bitcoin with blockchain. Again, this must be. Uh, something you have to educate a lot of customers on. How do you get through that, or is it, are they uh, past that now? Well, you know. Bitcoin uh, isn't blockchain. <laughs> the, the DAO network, which, which got hacked, and uh, they had to actually fork, I don't know if you remember about that, but uh, they had to fork the code to establish the uh, exchange again. And uh, what actually happened when there, it was not the cryptography, it was actually the smart contracts. The smart contracts that are part of the blockchain works that, um, that caused that trouble. Um, we feel that that is not going to be an issue with the permission and the private network. The other aspect that you need to know is that IBM is launching, we just GA'd a high security business network, which is a cloud offering, cloud-based offering that's running on Bluemix, and it's actually running on a very secure backend. What it's, it's, the, it's on mainframes, and we call it the Linux One box, and it's highly secure, and therefore, it offers high levels of um, cryptography and acceleration and uh, uh, container isolation and things like that, that every large financial organization yeah. today is very, very familiar with it. That's what they run their backends on. So, but on paper, 
right? My understanding is blockchain is, is effectively unhackable unless 50% of the participants in the- 51% the 51%, of the right, more than 50% you know, participate in, in the hack. Yes. Right, so, and there's no trusted third party required. Yes. Right, so those, those two things, those two factors in and of themselves make it uh, more secure than what we're used to. So, uh, presumably there are great security use cases emerging. I, certainly MIT Enigma and there are others, I know IBM is working on some uh, uh, in, in that use case uh, yes. for security. Can you talk about that a little so, bit? So it sends this algorithm that gets implemented within uh -huh. blockchain on um, how they agree on transactions getting written into the shared ledger. Now, if you implement an algorithm that doesn't need 51 person and you can have regulatory bodies or authorized parties that actually own and, and control that, then your 51 person is no longer necessary. The other, other one is you need to, uh, you know, a distinction between a, a Bitcoin network or a, a, a digital currency network and a private blockchain network is that private blockchain, however you want to implement for your specific enterprise, for your specific uh, um, organ, you know, network, which is very different from a 51 person, you know, if you buy a bunch of hardware servers and let it hack it and do mining and, and break the network that way, it doesn't really have an impact here, right? Right. So we have the CEO of DocuSign coming on tomorrow. So, oh, great. And we we're a DocuSign customer. We love <laughs> DocuSign. We use it all the time. Um, what happens to a company like DocuSign? Do they get disrupted by blockchain? Do they embrace blockchain? What, well, what should we, how should we think about that? Um, they are in the business of contracts. Right, if you think about it, that's, yeah, what, that's, what, that's what they're doing. And uh, um, I believe that they're going to have to adopt to the new way of doing contracts. And this is not just dog sign. Yeah, I believe it's that everybody. It's anyone in the legal business. Legal uh, contracts and legal, they are primarily paper-based and they're done by lawyers. Um, if there was a way to implement these uh, contracts through the blockchain network itself and associated with the transaction. It changes the way that it, they do business. So. Whenever you have new transformations, we said we were commenting on our intro about IoT and how that, you know, the DDoS attack just highlights the surface area of, of IoT from a security standpoint, which is a you know, separate conversation. Blockchain brings a new disruptive enabler to it. You mentioned some of the security built into it. Connect the dots for us on, on where blockchain connects with cognitive. Because you can almost imagine, okay, you got a trust network, you have transactions going on, you know, a lot of people are involved, there's all these mechanisms in place, but where does the AI thing kick in? Where does cognitive add the value on top of blockchain? What's IBM's point of view on this? So I'm going to come back to the first statement that I made. Blockchain is a new era of transaction processing, right? Transaction processing is not something that you want to in inject intelligence into. Um, because a shared ledger and a system of record is not something that you want it to be creative. That said, what we have found is that um, this the, the shared ledger or the information can be exposed and used as part of the data that goes into the cognitive to do predictive analytics, to be able to, um, we had an interesting conversation with, uh, uh, with one of our customers and they are a large supply chain management co company and they have relationship with uh, 17,000 um, different suppliers. And think about if some of their data was on blockchain that could be um, accessible to cognitive and um, Watson-like systems that traces and be able to provide predictive information as to the best way to optimize the supply chain. Right? That that makes it very interesting. The other thing that we also believe is uh, um, from a business processes, organizations run their workflows, business processes, um, um, and. Injecting blockchain for transactional side of it, but also cognitive to improve the processes to make them more intelligent, to make them more aware of what customer um, is interacting with them, makes it more interesting for organizations. All right, so for customers out there that don't know the internal IBM kind of organization, where does blockchain fit within the IBM purview? And if they're out looking for more information, what events can they go to? What things you guys have going on in market? Obviously the open source location, you have uh, GitHub out there, all kinds of code. Can you just lay out the landscape for how a customer would engage with IBM? So, um, IBM is, uh, I want to talk about three things. One, IBM is invested in building a community around blockchain, which is the hyperledger.org. Um, which is the IBM wrote code and actually donated to Hyperledger, and we are continuing to invest in building that fabric. There is a lot of meetups, and that way customers can get started. Um, the second one is IBM 
offers blockchain for developers and organizations that just want to uh, get started and get to know. There's a lot of tutorials, there's a lot of uh, um, information on bluemix.com. We have a starter developer plan that allows them to get started. Um, the third thing that IBM is also doing is uh, we are actively working with customers in building solutions together, right? And the Walmart joint solutions. Joint solutions, and uh, you know, the Walmart situation is one of such partnerships, and there are more partnerships uh, that we are working together. The idea is that blockchain is a network that um, extends beyond a single organization, and IBM is in a unique position where we can bring all these different participants into the network. So on the joint development, you bring that to bear with services and also product teams, so like cloud and or uh, however they want to construct that new network, if you uh, will? Agreed, and every, every conversation with the customer is a little bit different, because their value out of that network is yeah. different. Right. It has to be different, I mean. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. And so I engage with you, uh, I, I, you expose these services through your, I, the IBM Cloud. Yep. Right, and, yep. and okay, so what if I don't have IBM Cloud, or I have multi-clouds, can I use so them across clouds? We, we just uh, GA'd uh, um, some of the blockchain offerings uh, last week, and uh, what we did was, uh, if a customer wants to just get started, the hyperledger.org offers a Docker image that they could download, throw it onto their local machines or even any other cloud places that they can run. Um, the other one is the Bluemix. We have the developer edition um, starter offering as well as the high security business network which runs with the uh, Linux 1Z backend and very secure and that's for large organization enterprises. Um, we serve well. a lot of business-minded developers, so I want to get your, your take on my final question is, for the, and the ones that really want to see kind of a business model or kind of understand kind of where this, as you mentioned, not see transaction networks. Um, where can they go? Do you guys have a blockchain event? Is there an IBM event like World of Watson, kind of smaller version of blockchain? And, and how should they understand the business implications of a blockchain. So I, we were actually out at uh, Money 2020, and uh, you guys know yeah, that's a parallel that. event that's going on. We have a significant big presence. And uh, three weeks ago, I was at Cybos. Um, these are events where we believe uh, blockchain. Blockchain is a, is a technology. By itself, doesn't add significant value. What we believe is- But the is communities must go to some event that kind of Capstones everything in one year, culminating event. I mean, is, is, has there been a like a premier blockchain event out there? We are working on it. We haven't put it together yet. Okay, but sounds like it's, it's in the works. It's in the works. But right now, it's organic. at developers meetups. Absolutely. You have the Blue Mix joint solutions and and we do hackathons and we are working with a number of you know innovation yeah. labs, accelerators, tech accelerators, and so on. So it's kind of early innings for this. Yeah, right. Right. All right. Any other data you'd like to share with uh, folks around blockchain? Well, you know. Um, there is significant disruption waiting to happen because yeah. of blockchain, right? And uh, um, enterprises shouldn't be afraid of yeah. adopting it. Either they either uh, adopt it, internalize yeah. it, and be on the forefront, or they're going to get disrupted. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, hey, you know, you're, you're one of the old guys on the internet, you know, 50, but still, <laughs> I remember the early days. I said, hey, P2P killed music and brought us iTunes. So, like, there's a, an innovation opportunity with blockchain. I'm not saying, you know, blockchain will kill you know, pre-existing stuff, but it's certainly going to shape the landscape big time. Absolutely. So there's an iTunes out there for somebody with blockchain in every, every vertical. Absolutely, and um, you know, music industry is one in, one place <laughs> where we see a lot yeah. of applications. Yeah. You know, think of it a way where a, a music developer gets directly paid and doesn't have to go through any of the exchanges. And yeah, all that. free up the data, let the networks form with some trust. Yeah. Blockchain time. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. This is theCUBE here live at World of Watson. We wrap up more live coverage here at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. <laughs>